Don't let me get into Destiny's Child. <laughs> Caught up inside of lost and lost. If you would call and come home to me, darling. Okay. I bet. <laughs> the, the Bee Gees via Destiny's Child. <laughs> We may end with that. We may end with that version of emotions. Oh, Destiny's Children's. Woo. Um, oh, what is the sound? <laughs> Do you hear that? I don't think I hear anything. Okay. Oh, yeah. not, I just, I, it's a um, grass, um, a lawnmower kind of outside and it seems it's very it's not loud but like I'm just wondering if anyone else here hears it okay do you hear it now okay I swear I'm not imagining this <laughs> but anyhow thank you everyone thank you for joining us um I I don't know I just felt like starting out the session today with a little bit of music um, to kind of open our hearts. And, you know, these are songs that I, you know, have been sitting with and um, and just really relying on, you know, song, music, right, is such a profound emotional support right, for so many of us. It does so much labor for us. And I think when a musician is really attuned Right, really open to something like we can we can we can feel the the what they're channeling the the channels that they're coming through so i really like love that you know it's always been of course a big part of of my dharma um in terms of the incorporation of music and and what i write and how i teach um as well um i'm a student of music right a student of all kinds of music, but particularly early Black music, um, root music, um, music that I grew up with, you know, um, in the South, um, here in the South, right? So in any case, I um, again, I'm, I'm Lama Rod, for those of you who are new, I use he, him pronouns. I am living and teaching on the ancestral lands of the Creek, Muscogee, and Cherokee people here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and, and if you're new, joining us for the first time, please, you know, say hello. The chat would love to, to see you and to welcome you. And also remember to go ahead and get those prayer requests also posted in the chat because we're going to really get into practice very soon. Um, yeah. And just kind of, you know, checking in, you know, we're going to, we're going to start really, you know, kind of slowly settling into practice, but let's just start with, you know, just for you and your personal space, just um, bringing some attention to how you're feeling right now. What's coming up for you. Just acknowledging these experiences to begin with. Whatever material in our mind that's arising in terms of thoughts and emotions are just expressions of the deity. Just expressions of the deity. Our hopelessness is actually the same essence and nature as Medicine Buddha. Right. So even within the arising of really difficult emotions, the deity, the Buddhas are always, always trying to get us to understand, you know, that everything arises from the same nature, from the same essence, from the same sea of emptiness, space, energy. Right. So in a way, our Emotions, no matter how difficult they are, are sacred. 
And if we could hold even anger or despair or hopelessness with this, this kind of tenderness that we would hold anything else that was sacred, right? Then that would begin to transform, change our relationship to all the shit that we're always running away from. All the things that are labeled bad are not conducive, you know, are not what a good person should be thinking or, or experiencing. Again, the path of Tantra, which is what we're, we're practicing, this is the path of remembering there's nothing that isn't sacred. Because everything arises from the same essence, the same nature. And this is what we're trying to remember in our practice. But as the great Lauren Hill said, everything is everything. So when we begin to experience the nature of one thing, we begin to experience the nature of everything. Right? And this is also the wonderful thing about Tantra, right? One door unlocks, one key unlocks every door. Right? One key unlocks every door. So we focus on creating this key which is forged through awareness and care. And then that key that's been forged begins to unlock the great secret of all phenomena. It's not so difficult, it's not so hard. I mean, yeah, for some of you, right, it is. But like for me, <laughs> you know, you know, after all these years of practice, right, the secret to this, this, this keeping forged is not just the awareness and not just the care or the wisdom or anything like that. Really the great secret is relaxing like opening, surrendering, blossoming, right? Can you open, can you expand even within crisis, even within tension, even within the most acute anger, can you open, right? Because our habitual tendency is to is to tense, is to shrink, is to contract. Right? But what we're doing, what we're being called to do is extremely counterintuitive. You know, in the fire, we open, we expand, we blossom. And within that space, awareness becomes much more accessible. The care becomes much more accessible. And you begin to consume the chaos in this openness instead of the chaos consuming you. Right. So again, another way of saying this is that how can the wave overwhelm the ocean? Right. How can water overwhelm the wave? Like we're all just, just the same thing. A wave is the ocean, the ocean is water. The wave is water. Everything is everything, right? And this is what we're trying to train in. This, this thought, this slogan, if you will, right? Over and over and over again, there is nothing that does not arise from the great ocean of emptiness, space, and energy. There is nothing that is not emptiness, space, and energy. Everything. And when we think that there's something that resides outside of space, emptiness, and energy, that's when we're probably suffering. Right? 
there's this great split that happens. You know, when we say, well, this is this is emptiness and that over there isn't, right? There's no way to get free from the delusion here, right? Everything, everything has the same nature. The shit that I love, including the shit that I don't like. Everything is the same. And to deepen into that teaching, you know, we have to come into relationship with the heartbreak. I'm sure everyone's tired of me talking about heartbreak, you know, but until you reach enlightenment and start teaching me, then like you're gonna have to fucking deal with it. <laughs> Until we start really, really being with a heartbreak. Until we start really tending to it, like there, there's no way that we can be free. It's the heartbreak hotel. We've been there and done that already, so. <laughs> So I want us in our practice to bloom. You know, I want to go back to one of my favorite practices, you know, which is blooming. Again, imagining ourselves as the most precious, beautiful flowers, right? And we're just closed. Like we're just these closed flowers waiting for the sun, the radiance to awaken us. And maybe it's the radiance of, of Medicine Buddha today in this session. Right? Maybe it's the radiance of our benefactors whom we invite to invite us to open, to relax, to meet the rest of the phenomenal world, not with fear, but with curiosity with almost anticipation, right? But meeting also the phenomenal world with, with um, reverence, right? The reverence because everything is just a reflection of my own nature, right? The world is always showing us how to get free and we're trying to attune to those teachings right, through cultivating awareness right, and care and wisdom to let the teachings get clear and direct. And remembering, you know, that grief is just grief, right? Not to separate, but to say, even this must be held, regardless of where it comes from. This must be tended to, right? I think the world and the ego is full of so many tricks and illusions. And so instead of trying to figure it out, I just tend to it. I just hold it. The tricks only work if you react to them. Whatever is presented in front of me, I will consume it by opening offering space, right? And I begin to experience whatever needs to be experienced.
So you've been beginning to turn your mind now into the intention of practice. You know, we are practicing to get free from suffering, to get free from the illusions of suffering, and to help others do the same. We are practicing because other people rely on our practice to survive. We practice to remember who we are. We practice to take care of the pain. And we practice also to reduce harm and violence against ourselves and therefore against others around us. And who are you practicing for? And what I mean here is at the very beginning, where do we want or where do we need the energy or the beneficial qualities of our practice to stream towards and into? And who should, who is our practice supporting right now? Sometimes I like to call this like, I forget what I like to call it, but it's more like um, dedicating the merit up front. Starting just at the beginning and saying, this is where I want the energy of my practice, the good energy, the positive energy of my practice to go to. So when you're ready, I invite you to shift your attention just down to the seat, beginning to notice the weight of the body making contact with the seat. Noticing how the seat is lifting, rising to hold you. And of course, beneath us is the land, the earth, the expression of the mother, the physical form. As we think about the land, the earth under us, we are also at the same time touching the earth. Our awareness just gently touching into the consciousness of the earth itself. And allow that touching to be really gentle. And not thinking about it, not trying to have an experience, right? But just thinking about the earth, allowing that thinking of the earth to be this expression of gently touching the earth.
and even feeling this energy of foundation, this energy of stability that radiates from the earth. So just taking your time, and there's no rush here, but just really taking this time to really energetically connect with the earth. And so when you're ready, shifting your attention back to the seat, and I invite you now to begin imagining that you are your favorite flower, but closed. You're just like a flower bud. And then as you're imagining yourself to be this closed flower, we at the same time around us begin to call into the space all of our benefactors, our homecoming circle, calling in all our teachers and guides and mentors and elders and 
all the communities that love us and care for us, all of our benevolent ancestors, all of our lineages, all beings who love us and want us to be free. And slowly, we imagine that they begin to radiate the energy of care into the space around us. Filling the space with energy that you may experience or see in your mind as light or feel as warmth or experience in whatever way feels appropriate. But this energy just begins to, to slowly wrap us as we are still closed flowers. And just above us, we also began to imagine Medicine Buddha appearing in whatever form feels appropriate for you, either in the form as the traditional representation of, of Medicine Buddha or a being that embodies the healer for you. The Medicine Buddha begins to radiate the soft white light, like the sun radiating warmth and light across this land, this earth. And along with the care from our bitter factors, this radiance of the Buddha also with the care of our bitter factors begins to, to slowly be absorbed by us. And feeling the this energy, this invitation this warmth, this light. We slowly begin to imagine that we're blossoming, that our petals are slowly beginning to curl open. And we're beginning to open to the healing care and energy of our benefactors and Medicine Buddha just above us. And as we open, just like any flower, our most tender, important parts of ourselves become exposed, open to the light and the warmth of all these beings who want us to be free from suffering. And as we open, we begin to chant our opening mantra. Omen la sangue kino soha. 
My Muslim brother, please think of me. Please remember me. Please look upon me. We begin with a, an extended om, chanting the mantra three times, and then ending with another extended om to close the mantra of welcoming Medicine Buddha into our practice. We begin. Oh, 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 Sange Kino So Om La Sange Kino So So as we begin <clears throat> to transition into our main mantra, we just allow ourselves to, to open wide to the care, the healing of Medicine Buddha and of our benefactors, our homecoming circle. We're just letting this energy in to take care of us. Oh, say,
Just turning our, our attention to the prayer requests as always. Really calling <clears throat> all the the sources of refuge into this space, all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, all the Yadams, Dharma protectors, all beings of light, all protectors and guardians of the land and the elements, all benevolent ancestors. We call all you into the space. We summon you and ask you to hold these prayers and work on our behalf to bring about the fruition of these prayers for the benefit of all beings being prayed for. We offer prayers of support and to integrate, and offering prayers for support to integrate and to alleviate the ways my mental and emotional stress are manifesting physically. Offering prayers to not, that I do not have an infection after top surgery. Offering prayers for my daughter that she dry, thrives in this life emotionally and spiritually and physically. Prayers that I do the same and all my beloveds. Offering prayers for Melissa and her journey of recovery from a fall. Offering prayers for Gina diagnosed with breast cancer and her family. Offering prayers for my dogs, partner, and family that they may be well and spiritually realized and fulfilled. Offering prayers for my continued awakening. May I feel deep connection, interrelatedness, and fully held by Earth Mother. Offering prayers for Kelsey and her coming child that they have a safe and healthy birth. Offering prayers for Penny B, who is preparing for death. Offering prayers for Valerie, that she may finally find the peace and healing she seeks. Offering prayers for the victims, both living and in transition in Gaza. May the famine come to an end. May we all be empowered to offer supportive energy to those facing the worst fates imaginable. May our Palestinian brothers, sisters, and siblings emerge from this disaster with resiliency and a greater capacity for love. Offering prayers that may violence against women and thems come to an end. May the perpetrators of violence in all forms, intimate and anonymous, spontaneous and premeditated, be held meaningfully accountable. May survivors be protected at all costs. Offering prayers for the people migrating to the United States. May they feel loved and may those escaping violence and persecution find sanctuary. And offering prayers for Ramallah offering prayers that Western propaganda concerning Palestine, particularly queer folk and conservative backlash is abated and ultimately terminated. May all queer Palestinians know dignity, safety, and love. May Westerners cease visiting their standards and judgments upon Palestinians and instead invest in the existing resources cultivated by the activists fueling their own rebellion. May all we pray that all human beings strive to Disrupt the violence of all kinds, particularly that which targets women in film films. May we know a world free from femicide, matricide, and all forms of patriarchal violence that make statistics out of us. May we remember that love is a verb, a choice, and a practice. Offering prayers for my teacher, mother, sister, and friend, Cynthia, and her experience of fatigue and pain from chemotherapy and from the tumors in her bones that she is healed, and prayers for her daughter, Hannah, who is experiencing the sickness of her beloved mother, that any of her fear or anxiety is diminished, and prayers for her students who love her and fear her death. Offering prayers for Richard's mental health, offering prayers for Melanie for a diminishing physical and mental anguish, offering prayers for deep and penetrative clarity. Offering prayers to my beloved friend who died today of lung cancer, my cat Clover, for L, who let me go with more compassion and grace than anyone else I've known. May she find the awareness that is grace. May she find the awareness that she is grace. And for Queen Rod Owens, for John, who cares deeply for me, prayers for Chris and Sarah, who shelter and resource me, and prayers for Peter B, who's providing care for the dying. Offering prayers for my partner that their anxiety ceases and we find peace. Offering prayers for everyone in Gaza and for the safety and for this passage, the safe passage to all at the besieged Al Shifa Hospital. Offering prayers for Turner who is struggling with newly diagnosed type 1 diabetes. For myself and my family of origin as we continue to suffer old patterns. 
offering prayers for N and R and my neuro wonderful family branch to find ease of being in this ableist world. Prayers for me to get back to holding the line in art, mental health, um, academia, after a chronic illness flare. May all beings benefit from the countless blessings of my life. May Lamarad and everyone here be free. May all beings in all realms and timelines be free as soon as possible. Offering prayers for my coworker S and her elderly parents. May their family experience good health, both physical and mental, as they continue to age and home together. Offering prayers for Lamarad and Sangha siblings, S, K, Y, Mr. and N, as they navigate housing, mental health, and other challenges for people in Palestine, Congo, and Sudan, and other areas impacted by genocide, war, and oppression, for gender expansive folks and everyone who needs prayers. Offering prayers for Sudan, may every person in Sudan live a life free of fear and suffering. Offering prayers that may all we will experience May we all will that we all experience getting free and prayers for the Sangha here tonight. Offering prayers for liberation for all suffering for anguish this night. Offering prayers for me on this acceptance day when my grief around painful past events has come full circle. Thank you to Lama Rod and the Sangha for holding space that has saved me multiple times. Thank you to my guides for all their love and support. I'm offering prayers for Hillary, who is navigating a breast cancer diagnosis. Prayers for everyone who is impacted by health challenges right now. All the healers and doctors who are helping and discernment for Hillary and Pete as they make decisions. Prayers for courage, strength, and focus for Hillary. I'm offering prayers for Elk, who broke her, head, her leg. May it mend swiftly and may she be supported. Offering prayers for my aunt who lost her husband to suicide two years ago. May she be loved and feel loved. Offering prayers for all of us who are holding a sense of fatalism. May we be held and reminded that life loves us. Offering prayers that all beings heal the wound of delusion with the seal of emptiness. Prayers for myself. I am feeling lost and abandoned in pain of the past and pain of the present that I remember I am not alone that I remember I'm already a Buddha, that I recognize my benefactors and sources of refuge when they invite me to rest in them. Offering continued prayers for <clears throat> my mentor as well as my mother who are both suffering long COVID symptoms. Continued prayers for myself going through hard life transitions of depressive period and unemployment. May I surrender to uncertainty. Offering prayers for my protection and the protection of my home as a as a navigate housing uncertainty as I navigate housing uncertainty and a difficult separation. Offering prayers for my heart as I reintegrate. Offering prayers for connection with my guides, angels, and beings of light as I navigate deep transition and instability. May I trust that I'm being guided and know that I am not alone. Offering prayers for myself and my family as we began to navigate my father's illness and pancreatic cancer. <clears throat> May my own health and for for my own health and for the well-being of all caregivers. Prayers for me as I journey through a bout of intense anxiety, prayers that I can set boundaries, ask for what I need, and prioritize self-care. Prayers to Lama Rod and his beautiful courageous saga. Offering prayers to my sister-in-law with her current pregnancy. Offering prayers that Casey Benjamin has a good transition. Prayers for healing from cancer for Nicole, Kathan, and Nelly. Prayers that my mother learns to become less rigid and trust her world. Offering prayers for Jer Jeremy as he makes his decision. Offering prayers for me and my family. I'm all, I am, I'm all the way across the country from my partner and two children for three months. Offering prayers for Nora as she comes to the end of this lifetime, her upcoming journey through the Bardo and her next chapter and the beyond, and for her dear family and their heartache as they are at her bedside. Prayers for my beloved family as they continue to navigate treatment for anxiety and depression, that their healing continues. Prayers for my beloved brother and his wife as she faces the end of her lifetime this year. Offering prayers for all of our protection. Offering prayers for my mom that her cancer heals and that she is cured of it and the accompanying ailments. Prayers for me as I continue 
being a long distance caregiver, offering prayers for the people in the land of Palestine, offering prayers for several friends who have died in the last three weeks, Baker, Rachel, and Father Jim of a friend, offering prayers for people who are drawn to polarity and hatred, may they discover their deep heartbreak and heal and drop the hatred, offering prayers for my own and everyone's deep anxieties in this time, help with knowing how to surrender and just be, prayers of gratitude for the opportunity to pray together, offering prayers for Mercedes as she finds stable housing and the resources she needs, offering prayers for my friend, I, whose father recently went on from this life. And healing, offering prayers for healing of neck injury. Offering prayers for my partner as I, as we enter a painful transition out of our romantic connection. May the separation process be filled with mutual honor and integrity. Prayers for A and their continued healing. Prayers that all beings working for peace will find the boundless strength of love that is their true nature. Offering prayers for S as they begin radiation therapy to prevent the return of breast cancer. Offering prayers that all siblings recognize the true nature of their pain. And offering prayers for wisdom, clarity, and vision as, dis as I discern the next steps in my vocational journey. And I offer prayers for my uncle Donnell as he um, has transitioned into the spirit world. And offer deep um, prayers for the comfort, well-being, and the grieving of uh, his wife, as well as his, as well as his, as well as his daughter, and grandchildren. We continue to always pray for the complete abolition of all systems of violence, hierarchy, and harm. That we all remember our innate, awakened nature. That we all get free together as quickly as possible. And may it be so. As we turn our attention back into our mantra work, continuing to deeply um, drink into yourself this healing power, the energy, the care of medicine, blue, and all of your benefactors. And if you feel resourced enough, I invite you also to imagine beginning to radiate this care back out into the world, back into the lives and situations of all those we have lifted up in prayer. Begins, 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 begins,
as we begin to transition <clears throat> out of practice, we imagine that all the energy, this energy of care and healing from both Medicine Buddha above us and from our circle of care around us, radiates now completely out into the world, out into the lives of and communities and situations of countless beings who are struggling for survival, for wellness. And that this energy of care and healing completely frees them from suffering and all the causes and conditions of suffering. When you feel complete, we imagine that our circle of protection, or rather our circle of benefactors, begins to dissolve into white light. And we absorb that white light into ourselves, still as flowers, completely bloomed and open. And we take the energy of their deep care and love into the deepest parts of ourselves. And slowly we begin to imagine that we slowly transform back into our natural bodies. We slowly begin to imagine that Medicine Buddha, who's still above us, begins to dissolve into white light. And we imagine that that white light slowly drifts around us, creating this barrier, the shield of light. And this barrier, the shield, is our protection circle. And I pray that this circle of light, of healing, this circle of protection emanating directly from the awakened Buddha, that this shield of light protects us, protects our boundaries, protects us from experiencing harm, protects us from experiencing the, the harm, the, the negative intentions of other beings as well. That this shield of protection is strengthened and supported as long as we stay in a relationship with the Medicine Buddha and all the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. And may those without protection be protected. And may we become a protector for others as well. And when you're ready, shifting your attention back to the seat. Noticing the weight of your body and the seat rising to hold you. And when you're ready and feel grounded, beginning to reawaken your body through simple movements, stretching, and a few deep breaths.
And then we'll transition to our closing prayer, which we'll recite three times. May I be a protector to those without protection, and a leader for those who journey, and a boat, a bridge, a passage for those desiring the further shore. May the pain of every living creature be completely cleared away. May I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed. And just like space and the great elements such as Earth, may I always support the life of all the boundless creatures. And until they pass away from pain, may I also be the source of life for all the realms of very beings that reach into the ends of space. May I be a protector to those without protection, a leader for those who journey, and a boat, a bridge, a passage for those desiring the further shore. May the pain of every living creature be completely cleared away. May I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed. Just like space and the great elements such as Earth, may I always support the life of all the boundless creatures, and until they pass away from pain, may I also be the source of life for all the realms of varied beings that reach unto the ends of space. And finally, may I be a protector to those without protection, a leader for those who journey, and a boat, a bridge, a passage for those desiring the further shore. May the pain of every living creature be completely cleared away. May I be the doctor and the medicine, and may I be the nurse for all sick beings in the world until everyone is healed. Just like space and the great elements such as Earth, I always support the life of all the boundless creatures. And until they pass away from pain, I also be the source of life for all the realms of varied beings that reach into the ends of space. Okay. Well, thank you, um, everyone, um, for your practice. Um, and I, um, I won't see you again, um, until I think the 22nd of April. Um, and, um, until then, I know there's going to be um, lots of um, um, well, people, you, some of you, joining and helping us with practice. So I deeply appreciate that um, as well. And as a parting gift, you know, um, I would like to. Um, play this song 